This is going to be a short tutorial on rendering. Uh, first, we start with where are the render settings. So you have, of course, the rendering menu. Okay, but we're mostly going to use the, the icons. So here are the icons for 3D Max. Here are the icons for render settings, uh, the render frame buffer, and V-Ray is the, the frame window in V-Ray is called frame buffer. Here is for the different rendering um, options like rendering production and here down here with the plate that would be for active shade and this is to render in the cloud but we are not going to use these ones because these are where uh, when you render with 3 studio max so we are going to use the ones on the v-ray uh, tab if you cannot see it, it might be because you don't have the v-ray um, the v-ray plugin installed uh, but if you have it, then it's just a right click and V-Ray toolbar, okay? Here are the render icons for V-Ray. So here is to render the current frame. Here is to show the last V-Ray frame buffer. So uh, V-Ray, uh, it's like the frame window. These are for the render settings. And this icon will display the same as the teapot and the... Uh, and the symbol, and uh, here is for uh, V-Ray quick settings, okay? So if I press F10 or click uh, in the render setup or here in the V-Ray render setups, actually let's quick, just just click on the uh, render setup. It's gonna be by default in production rendering mode and skyline rendering, okay? Those are, are the ones for Max. Uh, if I wanted iterative or real time, that would be active shade. And um, what I'm going to do is just click here on the V-Ray render setting so that it's automatically set on V-Ray. Okay, so it asks, asks me if I want to set my current rendering into V-Ray. And what it does is that it changed the render into V-Ray Edu. So if you have a license that is not educational, it will be V-Ray uh, Advanced. So uh, I'm going to render now. And what you see is the new uh, V-Ray 3.5. It's a progressive rendering. It's not with packets anymore. Okay, and this is a V-Ray production. So uh, it's not real time. So the V-Ray production works uh, with a CPU. Okay, and uh, if I would like it real time, now we have in V-Ray 3.5 this option. It's an interactive render. This is not the same as Active Shade. Okay, what it does, it's a real-time render, but it's using a CPU. Okay, so uh, I can just do it here, or I can just click on this uh, teapot with the play. And now, uh, whatever I do here in my in my viewport is going to be affecting there in the V-Ray frame buffer. Okay, so I'm just gonna take it back. So what is the difference if instead of V-Ray Edu, I would use V-Ray RT? Okay, uh, the difference is basically that I can, instead of rendering with a CPU, I can render with my GPU. So with my graphic card, in this case, I can use OpenCL, but CUDA would be better because it's from my NVIDIA uh, card. And uh, in the latest computers, then this would be the fastest option unless you have about 24 cores in your uh, processor which most of you probably don't. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my V-Ray production render. And uh, the difference is that uh, with the pr um, production render, I can render uh, the production mode and I can render the iterative mode, both with CPU and with V-Ray RT. I can actually render them all, uh, but it would work better in Active Shade. Okay, I'm going to go back again to my production render. And now I would like to show you the quick settings, okay? Um, uh, once you, you put all the settings in the render, this can come uh, very useful because it has these preset settings for different situations like uh, interior, scene, uh, exterior, VFX that doesn't have global illumination because you can do that a lot in compositing. And the studio setup, uh, which has different qualities as a, as a exterior interior scene, depending on the bounces or stuff like this. So you could use this uh, to use as a base. 
but the default render settings work for almost every situation. So continuing with our icons up here, uh, let's assume I already uh, have some settings, okay? And I'm going to check what my render setups, uh, my icons are here for. Here's where I click between production or uh, real time. This will be real time, this is production. Okay, but if I just click on my last V-Ray frame buffer, it's gonna show me the last one that I rendered. I can start a new render and this is production. I can stop it and then with this, just make it interactive. Okay, and then it's going to interactively um, um, update itself. Uh, at this moment, it's running on my CPU, so it's a bit uh, heavy actually. And uh, we have some options here. This is where all my render elements is, are going to appear. This is my render region, so I can just selectively pick this region and let it update just in a region. Uh, in the case where we had the bucket, I could just click here and define where, where is the rendering updating. Okay, I can just stop the rendering process here and it goes back to the mode uh, for the production. Here is to save, of course, okay, or to load an image. And uh, here we have other interesting options. I can show uh, corrections controls, so I have all the controls of the, uh, that we, you usually would have for color correction and curve and levels. That's uh, typical things that you have for a raw image or in Photoshop or, or, or Lightroom. And, um, here is an interesting button that is by default on. Okay, I'm gonna take this one off. And this is displayed in sRGB space. If I take it off, you are going to see that it's a lot more uh, contrasting and a lot darker. And this is because it's, this is the linear workflow. This is how the calculations are actually done in the screen. And this is adapted to our screen, which are almost all the images done. So this is why it comes uh, as a default. Another interesting option here is my history. Okay, um, I can open it and uh, I can save this image. Uh, originally it's going to ask me to save a path, but I already have it. Okay, and then I can just move this in a different direction, render it again, it's going to appear up here. Let's assume it's, it's done. Okay, now I can save this one as well. And I call one A, the other one B, and then I get to compare between the two of them. Usually you do this not when you move something of place, but when you change a material or a light or render settings to check uh, what's the difference, you can right click here and edit the comment or load the V-Ray settings so that you can compare one settings with, with others. Okay, I'm going to just erase this. And I'm actually going to close the history. You also have this uh, LUT correction. You can load a uh, lot profiles, just like you would do it in uh, photography editing softwares. And uh, this is it for this tutorial. The next ones uh, will show you the basic render settings.